And you shall call his name Jesus. For he saved you from your sin. <laughs> you shall call his name Jesus. For he saved you from your sin. You shall call his name Yehovah, salvation. You shall call his name Yahushua. For he saved you from your sins. I will call his name Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. For he saved me from my sins. Hallelujah. Woohoo! <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I will call your name Jesus for you saved me from my sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Almighty God, we praise you. That's what hallelujah means. It means, Lord, we praise you. Almighty God, we praise you. Oh, Lord, or Jehovah, we praise you. We give our lives to you, Lord, and praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, you know, praise is easy when you're thankful. <laughs> When, you, when, it, when these things of God are real to you, then it's easy for you to say, I call your name, Jesus, for you saved me from my sins. So reality, when you say Jesus, you're saying, you saved me from my sins. You should call his name Jesus, for he shall save you. His name should be called Jesus, for he shall save you. From your sin. Hallelujah. That's what that means then, right? You understand? You understand? That's why saying that Jesus Christ is God, is Lord, is a spirit of prophecy. To really say it, to really say it, to say it for real, you know. I call your name. Jesus, for you saved me from my sin. Oh, I call your name, Jesus, for you saved me from my sin. Creator, my Creator. My Redeemer, my Redeemer, my Savior, my Savior. The Lord Jesus is here. Jesus is here. The Lord Jesus is here. Let him touch you. Feel you, heal you, give you an understanding that you may know the living God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say it again. Say it again. We stand here in this presence in the Holy of Holies by the blood of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for taking your precious blood and washing the souls, the lives of every person in this place. 
Father, we thank you for such redeeming grace that removes the stronghold of every power of darkness. That we thank you for your love, O oh God, that redeemed us, that brought us unto yourself. Now in the name of Jesus Christ, I bind every mind-blinding spirit. I break the power of every distracting thing in the name of the living God so that every person in this place can come to know you, O oh God, can come to walk with you in all the realms of your goodness and all the realms of your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now just give thanks to him. One day, four friends went and grabbed a hold of one of their friends and they brought him to Jesus. And he was a man who was crippled, all bound up. Paralyzed. Jesus looked at him and said, I release you from your sins. Jesus says to you today, How easy is it? I release you from your sins. We make a lot of religion and ritual out of what He's provided so freely in His grace. He gave to His ministers the power to turn people from Satan to God. Not too long ago, we were standing across the street from a deity, a demon power that had been worshipped by people for thousands of years, probably 5,000 years, from the Veda, from ancient Brahmanism, the Veda, to modern-day Hinduism. Somebody said, weren't, weren't you just basically binding all of that? I didn't have to bind nothing. It's already been bound 2,000 years ago. Jesus broke the power of it, destroyed principalities and powers and might and dominion. Everything's subject to him. Come here, baby. My wonderful wife just, and I just stood up, looked at people across the street. The place was filled with about 30,000, 40,000 people. Who knows how many people were there? And we just said, hello. hello. And the powers of darkness left. Just with the Holy Ghost, hello. Just with the Jesus in me, hello. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And isn't the Lord so wonderful to us? Oh, that all men can come to know this life. Listen, I'm going to tell you, God has a far better life for you than the one you've been living. He wants to give you a kind of life, a quality of life that goes beyond all imagination or comprehension. The very life that he himself lives and possesses. Satan has in demanded inferred his life upon all humanity because of sin. And people worshipped him through the acts of sin. They don't realize that people worship Satan and empower him through sin and iniquity. Jesus broke the bondage of sin so that all men might go free. All we do is go everywhere telling people, you're free. You're at liberty now to be released, to come out of your prison. And I pray in the name of Jesus, you'll grab a hold of these things, these truths with me. You'll grab a hold of the reality that all authority is given to Jesus in heaven and earth and he's looking for someone to agree with him. There's no reason that 3.2 million people in the county of San Diego should continue to live as they live. No longer should men be able to rule under the authority of Satan when Christ Jesus has all power, has all authority. Father's looking for some people who understand how to step into that realm of his divine authority, into that realm of his divine grace, into that realm of divine power, and say, this is how things are going to be. And do it in such a way that they have to be heard and their voice must be recognized because they give no place to Satan. They give no place to the powers of darkness to exercise his control over their life and limit them and hinder them and confine them to only a certain degree of influence. We have unlimited power. Oh, Amen. Amen. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's just amazing when you think about the fact 
the reality that God has an opportunity for you. I don't care where you're at, whether you've never known Jesus up to this point or whether you've walked with him for many, many years. God has all the fullness of his own life, the quality of it. People are, are captivated by the quantity, but you don't want the quantity without the quality. Believe you me. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's given to us his life. And when he revealed who he was, he said, I am merciful and gracious and long-suffering. I am full of goodness and truth. Jesus said, if you see me, you see the Father. We will look at Jesus and life of Jesus. And he walks in loneliness and meekness. He says, come, come take this life upon yourself. Come, I've got the life for you to live. I have, I have a life that's so undefinable, undefinable. All I can tell you is it's abundant life. The very life of God. It will be so fill you that it will flow out of you like rivers of living water. In an unlimited, immeasurable way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to do that which only you can do. Father, I ask you to bring the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Jesus to every person that is right now standing in this room, that is watching by the web, that is watching this on a YouTube right now, that their eyes would be open, that they might be able to see what you've done in your long suffering. 2,800 years ago, Elijah wanted to bring the whole thing to an end. He got so upset, he thought it was good. You know, he was the, he's the prophet that stands between the way things are with respect to Satan's influence in an earthly realm, his influence over the people of God, and when Christ Jesus steps in and begins to reign for a thousand years. And he thought when he called fire down out of heaven... When God sent his fire and approval of, on Mount Carmel that it would all come to pass. He got all upset because Jezebel was still alive. He ran out into the wilderness. The angel gave him some food. He ran for 40 days, came to Mount Sinai, stood there before the Lord where Moses heard who God was. Moses heard when Father revealed himself and said, this is who I am. You want to see me? Merciful, gracious, long-suffering. You want to see me? Full of goodness and truth. Elijah, he wanted it all to end then. He really did. He wanted everything to get wiped out. So God moved on his program. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to come before you. And he came. And, you know, Elijah's the one who's going to come back. Revelation chapter 11, according to Malachi, just before the day of the Lord. Fire will proceed out of his mouth and devour the enemies of God. That's who he is. He's just, he's one of those guys. <laughs> like, you're not going to mess around with this program of holiness and righteousness kind of thing. And the Lord passed before him and the mountain was torn away. The rocks exploded. But he was not speaking in that wind. That wind was so powerful, he was not speaking in it. Then there came a great earthquake that shook the whole of the earth. But he was not speaking in it. <laughs> then there came a fire, the fire of God that enfolds upon itself, which no man or nothing can stand before. But he was not speaking in it. Then there came the whisper, the whisper, the whisper, still small voice. You have to, you got to read lips to understand it. He spoke into a manger, Christ Jesus, the word, he spoke the word. He showed Elijah that just with the smallest whisper, changed all the worlds, he created the universe with a whisper. Had no idea how long suffering father was to wait another 800 years to bring the Savior of the world, the revelation of who he himself is, the Logos, the Word, the, unveil, the unveiler, the declarer, the proclaimer of all that Father is. To now with all that long suffering, work with the people he calls his church for 2,000 years to bring us to a place to be the living example of his life. There is no light to, for men. When they cannot see the very life of God. God's people have been overrun again and again with sin and compromise. I hear people talk about compromise as though it were a, though it were a virtue. Compromise is demonic. It's not a virtue. It is a tactic of Satan to get you to ultimately capitulate. 
to abdicate what Christ Jesus has given us. Father is one who brings us into agreement. What another realm. What a totally another realm. It's a totally another world. Uh, it's the world of God. And God, I tell you, agreement is far easier than compromise. Hallelujah. Everybody, all we have to do is just agree with the Father. We're going to be in agreement with one another. Amen. Hallelujah. We'll never get in agreement with each other with our vast differences in experience and our vast differences in opinions and perceptions and huh, IQs and EQs and all the rest of the Qs and the Ps too. <laughs> oh, but thank you, Lord Jesus, that you redeemed us. That you made a way so that we could be sanctified, set apart by your blood so that the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God would come upon us. The one who is so holy, the holiness cannot even begin to comprehend his holiness. The one whose holiness cannot be approached to, cannot be seen, cannot be touched, cannot be in, in any way contaminated with the presence of men. It's come. He's happy, happily leading us and leading us and guiding us and ministering to us by this grace that has been brought to us by Christ Jesus that now reigns. A grace is reigning over us right now. Just like death reigned over mankind because of sin, right now grace is reigning over mankind because of what Jesus did for us. And that grace is teaching us to deny all ungodliness and worldly lust and to live righteously and godly and sober before Him right now. And with that grace and with that mercy and with that long suffering, if you're wanting to repent and if you want to be forgiven and if you want to learn how to walk in the right way and do the right thing, what Papa will do is he will forgive you again and again and again and again where it took Adam's one act of transgression and sin to ultimately destroy all Father's plan for him and subsequently all men who came by him. Now through what Jesus did for us, that that living sacrifice that ever intercedes for on our behalf. He washes and cleanses us as though we never sinned. Is, is, is God amazing? It isn't for those who want to continue in sin. It is for those who want to learn the ways of God. This life, hallelujah, this life of God, this life of the Spirit. Baby, why don't, why don't you say some things? by the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, marvel not that I say ye must be born again. One of the greatest blessings of being born again is that you who were once spiritually deaf can now hear. You can hear his voice. It is imperative that the church hear his voice because in these last days the church is his voice. True. In the Old Testament and in the New Testament, in Isaiah 66, 1 and Acts 7, 49, it says, Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. If you're sitting in a chair, you don't put the footstool all the way to the other side of the room. The footstool is connected with the chair. Heaven is connected with earth. <laughs> in Genesis 28, we see that Jacob had a dream, and he saw a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And he saw angels ascending and descending, and he saw the Lord at the top of it. And then he awoke from his dream, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. This is none other than the house of God and the gateway of heaven. Can you hear it? The direct connection from heaven to earth. The word left heaven to come to earth so that we could have a direct connection with the word to earth. <laughs> Thank you, Hallelujah. Jesus, for your loving kindness. Job said in 37, chapter 37, verses 2 and 3. Hear attentively the noise of his voice. 
and the sound that goeth forth out of his mouth. He directeth it under the whole heaven. You have two ears and one mouth. You are to be swift to hear and slow to speak. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to God so that you may hear his voice. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and am known of mine. And there are other sheep that are not of this fold. But I must bring them also. For they shall hear my voice. For there is one fold and there is one shepherd. That should make you want to break out into the hallelujah it chorus. Does make me <laughs> because we were the sheep totally that were added. We he are. broke down the hallelujah. middle wall of partition. <laughs> he is our peace. Hallelujah. God is into addition. The cross is an addition sign. It is. And Cornelius' house were the first fruits of the Gentiles that received the Holy Ghost to bring us in to the family of God. No more separation between the Jews and the Gentiles, but one sheepfold under one shepherd, one family. And the chief characteristic of the good shepherd, he's actually a great shepherd, but he's so humble, he says he's the good shepherd is that he has a protective love for his sheep. A love that went to the extent that he laid down his life for the sheep. There's no one and like he Jesus. keeps his sheep protected. No like he says, submit yourself therefore to God, and then you'll stay in that protective realm of my love. He says, he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, dwells, abides, remains in the secret place shall abide under this protective love, shall abide under the shadow of the Most mm. High. So be sober. Mm. Be vigilant. For your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion. A lion roars because it's hungry. Any child can tell you that. Seeking whom he may devour. He doesn't devour those in his camp. He devours those that are a threat to his kingdom. That's correct. The saints in light. That is it. The blood-bought church. That is true. That is sealed with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So he tells you, we know that Jesus said that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and that was over 2,000 years ago. But today, the last days... The end of all things is at hand. He tells us again, be sober and watch unto prayer. Jesus came and summed up in front of Pontius Pilate his mission to earth. He said, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, to bear witness unto the truth. <laughs> Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. So you can shout hallelujah because John 15, 27 includes you who were at it. You shall bear witness of the truth. How be it he, when he shall come, the spirit of truth, he shall guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself. Listen to this godly submission. Though he were God, the Holy Ghost, he submits himself. He doesn't speak of himself. But that which he hears, he speaks. And he will show you things to come. Jesus declares, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, you will know that I am he. And that I do nothing of myself. The submission there unto the Father. For as the Father hath taught me, I speak those things. Oh, God. The church must arise and shine, for its light has come. 
And the glory of the Lord is risen upon it. We are the light of the world. Yes, we are. The glorious church must hear his voice because in these last days it is his voice. He's raising up an army and he's raising up a glorious church that is not deaf. It hears his voice. It is not dumb. It proclaims this gospel of truth. The glorious church is not ashamed of this gospel. For it is the power of God unto salvation. The glorious church, it is not crippled. It bears witness and demonstration of the Spirit and of power. Yes. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. As the Holy Ghost saith, if today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. God in these last days has spoken to us by his Son. Hear his voice, church. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can be seated. You can be seated. Um, you know, I, I pray that every man in this place is as blessed as I am. Father, when he gave, you know, the scripture says, He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Um, my goodness, did I ever get favor. I mean, I know how much he loves me. The wife that he gave me. I, I, get to, I get to have this ministry going on all the time in my life. She won't allow me to be sick. She just lay hands on me and tell me to get strong in the faith and quit being a doubtful mind. Hallelujah. Welcome all of you here today. I'm, there's, there are so many things God wants to do with your life. There are so many wonderful things that Father desires to reveal to you. And we pray the atmosphere be set for you today so that you can begin to hear His voice like never before. You can begin to understand that cooperating, cooperating with Him and walking with Him is better than anything you possibly can do. Um, I'm so blessed to have Joshua here. Those of you who don't know him, he's my, he's my oldest son. And, and uh, they're raking him over the coals in his Ph.D. program at uh, UC Santa Cruz. And if he can be happy... Uh, Oh, with all he's going through. <laughs> uh, circumstance can't violate the anointing, you know. Hallelujah. Circumstance can't violate the kind of life that Father wants to give you. But you decide how much it will. You decide how frustrated you're going to be, how upset you're going to be, how doubtful, how unbelieving you're going to be, or how happy you're going to be. And uh, if you're going to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're going to live this life in the Spirit, if you're going to walk in the beauty and the splendor, that he has for you. You're just going to have to just forget about circumstances and situations and the pressures to, that uh, this world around you would try to put on you and just start living this abundant and glorious life. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray that from this day forward you recognize when you say Jesus, you're saying he, he saved me from my sin. The one who saved me from my sins. Amen. Amen. Thank you, living God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus freely receiving. Life and rest and joy and peace. Wow, what a life. You're going to have to live that one. I know you've got to be a bit of a soprano to sing it in this key. But... Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I proved him more and more. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him. That's great. Put the next verse up there. Do you have those verses? Put the next verse up there. Yeah, that one. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to trust 
His cleansing blood and in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing flood. I've got to sing that again. Because if you could walk out of here today having that, you're good to go for the rest of eternity. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to trust his cleansing blood and in simple faith to plunge me neath the healing cleansing. Jesus, Jesus, I trust. I proved him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus. Oh, for grace to trust him more. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just say thank you. Come on, just thank him. Thank him and continue to thank him for a little while. Praise him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Go ahead, talk to him. Talk to him like you do <laughs> when you're all alone with him. Hallelujah. Talk to him <laughs> like only you can talk to him when the Holy Spirit lives and dwells in you. Go ahead, talk to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, living God. Thank you, mighty Savior. Thank you, Lord. I worship you. I'm, ble I'm so blessed to have Mac with us today. His papa is a great preacher in Papua New Guinea. In long name, long Papa God, long name, long Bikinini. In long name, long Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And, you know, we're considering going to West New Britain this year. And uh, we're going to go there only for the purpose of seeing the gospel preached, the kingdom of God revealed, devils going out of those possessed by and blind see, deaf hear, crippled walk. Amen. Amen. We were in, uh, in Nepal one time and we were having a, by, by, by night we were having, of course you do it in the evening, we're having a big mass evangelism crusade. By day we're ministering to all the leaders in that region I mean, there was several, probably hundreds. There were hundreds and hundreds of people, more than a thousand. And it was very hot, probably 110, 112, something like that. And uh, and I, I, we, it was a beautiful thing. We, we'd, we'd been praying for people. In fact, a preacher, I was with a preacher not too long ago in Nepal, and he said, you know what, I think one of the greatest signs and wonders I've ever seen is how those people laid out there in that sun for such a long time because the power got hit and they push mowed down by the Spirit of the Lord. And, and everybody was just fine. They were comfortable. And it was that, it was just baking hot. But in that same meeting, I, we, were, we were sitting one morning getting ready to start the meeting and someone came to me and said, do you have a doctor in your group? I said, yeah. <laughs> and they said, well, we, there's a person that came, they in a, they're in a coma. I said, well, I'll come right now. Oh, you're a doctor? Yeah. And, of course, the guy was a preacher, so he kind of knew what, it was, what I was driving at. Well, I, wasn't, well, I don't want to have any dialogue. And I just walked over, and I said, I said, hey, sweetie, wake up now. Her eyes popped open. She's looking around, her eyes going all over the place because she'd been in a coma. Where on earth am I? Because she was in a church. They'd brought her to the meeting. She was in a church. Huh? When you fool the Holy Ghost, all you got to do is say, hey, sweetie, wake up. Because I'm already in the name of Jesus. I'm in him. I'm in him, he's in me. I praise God. I come in the name of Jesus. I'm there for the... I got on an airplane and flew in coach. Cramp section. The place where all your... In the natural, all your joints basically inflame. I was already there in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And then we, you know, we're believing God to do the crusade in Jairapura, just west of... 
your home village of Wiwak. And uh, in Indonesia, it's Irian Jaya. And we just, we believe that the dead will be raised to life again in those meetings. And a fr dear friend of mine, Holy Ghost man of God, just amazing anointing in his life. He had this dream, I, he was with me in Lay, when we were in Lay, Papua New Guinea. And he had this dream, and the most radical dream I've ever heard. This is a greater works dream, okay, you with me? And he said, well, we were walking to the jungle, into the deep, thick jungle, because you could be walking along, and all of a sudden you just come up against an idol that's standing there, you know, with this terrifying look or whatever, you know, <laughs> trying to keep all the bad guys out. And so they, that's how they keep the devils away, or try to at any rate. And really, they, what they don't realize is they're summoning the devils come torment them. <laughs> but at any rate, we walked into a village, and, you know, it was like a headhunter's village. And, and my dear friend was preaching the gospel. John, I hope you're enjoying this if you're watching. I'm sure he is. And he took a stick and he, and he planted it in the ground. He's a, little, he's a young, I mean, not, not young, he's old now. He's older than I am. Uh, he's kind of a shorter Italian guy who's never taken anything, you know, never taken uh, any problems from anyone. He's just kind of always been a fighter kind of a guy. And he stuck the stick into the ground. And he took, he walked around and he took one of the skulls and he stuck it on top of the stick and said, in the name of Jesus Christ, live again. And the person who belonged to that skull formed upon the stick and came back to life again. I said, well, John, that is absolutely the most, that is the most radical dream I've ever heard. That is a greater works dream. There's no one who can top that dream. And so I just, I told him, I, I called him up a couple of days ago. I said, John, I, I, I want you to go to Yerian Jaya with me. I, I just really believe that that's where we're going to see those kinds of signs and wonders and miracles. See, those people are from a different realm, you see, of humanity. They live every day in the spirit world. They deal every day with demon power. They, they, they don't have the cloak of intellectualism. They didn't go into the enlightenment, if you know what I'm saying of a uh, intellectual world and uh, now have a means by which they are more deceived than man has ever been deceived. And the, it's amazing the deception that's there in, in the framework of pursuit of knowledge. But it's no wonder, right? Right? It's no wonder. Because you can look back and... Genesis chapter 3, and it was a pursuit of knowledge, wasn't it? Man seeking his own way. Well, you know, today, I want you to understand, you and I have the opportunity to walk God's way. He paid a high price for you and I to walk his way. We've got to forsake all of our stuff. You know, I was telling somebody just recently, this morning, God has his apostles today. But most people wouldn't recognize them because they're different, as different from mainstream religion as Paul was in his day. And this is the truth. It's true. God's called us to walk in a radical different direction. It's not all of these religious ideas. Let me tell you, can I tell you what separates me from religion? What separates my life and everybody's life that I've ever seen walking out this life of Jesus Christ from religion? When they pray, the manifest presence of Jesus can be felt. Huh. When they sing, the manifest presence of God is apparent. Religion doesn't have that. It doesn't have it. It just doesn't have it. And um, we want every one of you to have such a relationship. Huh? I mean, your prayers have changed as soon as all of a sudden you begin to pray in such a way where the Holy Ghost is talking to the Father through you. My goodness, you're going to get yourself a magnificent response when the Holy Spirit's talking to the Father. When you begin to recognize that Jesus Christ has come to live on the inside of you, you don't have to live with demon spirits on the inside of you anymore. You don't have to live oppressed. You don't have to live tormented. You don't have to live, live a vexed life anymore. You don't have to have that anymore. Christ Jesus died for you at Calvary's cross. In, first, in John, rather, John chapter 1 and verse 4, uh, we hear the declaration of Jesus Christ. 
And I want you to open your Bibles and I want you to look at it with me. If you have a Bible, I want you to open it. If you don't have a Bible, you can look on with someone else. And I really believe in people, I believe in people taking notes. I believe in it. In people taking notes. But here we already got our notes all written out for us. Huh? Right? I was getting ready to take genetics class. And I did a genetics test. You know what I did? I went to try to find somebody who had good notes, like Stuart here, you know. <laughs> Give me some good notes, you know. <laughs> Put all those notes together. I get, if I get the right information, I'll study the right, I'll study the right things, huh? And not get surprised with the questions. Here we got our notes taken for us. Praise God for them. I'm going to live by these notes. Amen. This is the word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is the whisper that changed the world. This is the whisper that created the universe. This is the word, the revelation, the proclamation, the declaration, the unveiling of God, Christ Jesus. In him was the life. And I could say in him is the life right now. And I could say in him will be the life in the future. In him was the life. And see, it's this life that he had that no one had seen on the planet. Moses, though he had his face glowing with the brightness of the appearance of God to him, did, was not able to manifest this life. Not like Jesus manifested the life. No one ever, Job, though God said he was perfect and righteous in all of his ways was not able to manifest his life. The Noah was righteous in his generation. He was not able to manifest his life. Jesus comes and he manifests the very life of God and it's that life that is the light to the world. He says, you are the light of the world, but you are not. You and I are not the light of the world if we do not have the life of God. He that possesses has Christ Jesus living in them. They have this life, and this life is the light, and this life is everything that, descri that is described uh, as the attributes of the Holy Spirit. It's this love that is the love of Christ that passes knowledge. It's this peace for which Christ Jesus, the Prince of Peace, has given it to us that passes understanding. That it seems so few take a hold of living out this life and growing and maturing in it. It's fine to be a newborn babe. It's fine. Everybody begins their spiritual life as a newborn babe. But we have to be willing to grow and mature and come to a place where we can say boldly, the Word of God abides in me. And I have overcome the wicked one. It's pretty radical, isn't it? John writes, I write to you young men because the Word of God abides in you. <laughs> And you've overcome the wicked one. Whew. Amazing. You know, to the, Jew, to the Orthodox Jew, to the Haradim or the Sadek, you cannot convince him that he has sin. But to the Christian, you can't convince him that he's righteous. It's pretty whacked out. Satan's a master at his game, isn't he? I'm trying to convince an Orthodox Jew that you have sin. I don't have sin. I'm, the, I'm righteous. I'm the righteous. I'm, I'm Sadek. Say to a Christian, don't you know that he became the sin sacrifice so that you might be made the righteousness of God? No, I'm a sinner. Oh, there's a change that God wants you to have a revelation about. It's a change where God has liberated us from the chains of bondage, opened, us, opened up the prison doors of ignorance and blindness of heart. And darkness of understanding. And has brought us in to behold this wonderful life of God. Behold something. Moses is petitioning God. He's seen things that no man had ever seen. And he's petitioning him. Oh God. Oh Lord. I just want to see you like you are. He got enough of a taste of God to want to realize he's a wonderful, wonderful being. A wonderful person. Oh, I just want to know you more. It's okay. I'm going to let you see me. Of course, you know, God says to Moses, look, you cannot see me and live. Moses is like, I don't even care. I want to see you. He says, it doesn't matter what it costs me. 
cost me my life, no problem. Let me see you. And the Lord says, okay. I'll have mercy upon those whom I'll have mercy upon. And to those whom I will, basically he says, I'll make a way. He's willed for you. And he's made a way for you. He's had mercy upon you and me. And in that mercy, he's brought to us a divine opportunity to clean escape all the influences of a demonic world where fallen angels would ultimately deceive you under the authority of Satan to destroy you and torment you now and eternally in hell. God's looking for somebody to manifest his life. I think that one of the greatest challenges that people need to face is that there is a life better than the one you're living. It is the full, glorious reality of the very life of God, and it's joy unspeakable. Love of Christ which passes knowledge. That's not religion. Peace that passes understanding. That's not religion. <laughs> joy unspeakable and full of glory. That's not religion. To have the life of God, this is who I am. I'm merciful. Mercy comes out of love. Out of mercy comes forgiveness. There's no unforgiveness among God's people. You know, listen, I'm telling you right now, when you come to church, church and what you do in church is supposed to be the very pinnacle of the revelation of who you are in God. But when you come into this presence through the Lord, whatever you are will be made manifest, whatever's really in your heart. If you're sad, you'll be sad. You can be happy out there, but not here. Because truth has to be revealed here. If you have praise in your heart, praise will come out. Because the manifest power of God is here. Everything is revealed. What people can do is if they're sad and despondent and unhappy, if they're, they're tormented and hurting and vexed, if they're condemned and oppressed, all they got to do is call upon the name of the Savior. Yehoah. There is a word that we use to describe the Father. It was revealed there in that same passage of Scripture in Exodus when uh, Moses asked to see, to know who Father was. And he passed before him and he revealed to Moses who he was. He said, I am Jehovah. And some people say Jehovah. And uh, some people say of the Tetragrammaton, Yahweh, yod heh yo hey wah hey but it's Yehoah. Yehoah is the best way that we can understand it linguistically. Yehoah. This wonderful revelation of who he is. Yehoah. He's the eternal existing one who has life in himself. You and I don't have life in ourselves. Father has life in himself and Jesus has life in himself. The word who is Yehoah salvation. That's what his name means. Yehoshua. I know people speak Aramaic and they say Yeshua. Yeshua is Aramaic. Hebrew is Yehoshua, which means Yehoah's salvation. Yehoah's Shua. Huh? This is what Father would do for us. I'm going I'm to provide for you an offering. He says, I want you to come worship me. I want you to come worship me. And Abraham, he showed Abraham this wonderful salvation. He said, Abraham, come worship me. And bring your son, the son whom you so love. But just not because the Lord wanted Abraham to act as all of the heathen people and ungodly people of his day acted and sacrificed their children, but he wanted to show Abraham what he himself was going to do. Abraham, knowing who God was, willingly took Isaac because he knew the benevolence, he knew the love, he had tasted the goodness and the mercy and the grace of Father. So he willingly, you know, saddled the donkey, got the wood, took the knife, brought the fire to go offer the offering to worship the Lord. And he knew because he saw it. The Lord gave him a revelation because he said to his servant, stay here, my son and I will go over there and we're going to worship and we shall return unto you again. Listen to him. Huh? He knows what he's going to do, but he, he knows the plan of God. And, and, and now uh, Isaac says to him, Behold the wood. Behold the fire, the knife. Where's the offering? The Lord himself, Yehoah himself, shall supply the offering. 
your God himself will produce a lamb. I got a lamb right now that I cannot even imagine. My lamb is God eternal manifested in the flesh. We call the logos or the unveiling of God, the only true revelation of God, the only proclamation of him, the, the, the one who declared everything about him, who showed this life. It's a life so pure, so wonderful, so, uh, so perfect, so unimaginable that it's unlimited. It can't cease at any time. It doesn't diminish in any way. There's no decay there. No, no, no diminishing of it. It's everlasting. Forever and forever. And he's come. He came to Calvary's cross to pour out that life for you and me. He became the living bread so that we could take of this bread and live. He went to the cross and he poured out his life so that that life represented by his blood, by the fluid of his body as it were, became the healing stream, became the means by which the transference of God's life came into us. Wherever that life was, God the Holy Ghost came and created a new life. It doesn't matter how deep and how terrible the chaos of darkness, how desolate, how tohu vamahu is, how empty and desolate it is. How, how, how meaningless and, and vain it is. Recreation. Recreation by the grace of God. I come with my lamb. He's my lamb. He's my lamb. He's my lamb. We love, we love our animals, you know. And if you ever have a, give birth to a little lamb, they're the helpless, most helpless, cutest little things you've ever seen. And then if, you know, you grow to where you really like that lamb because it's a special lamb. And you just, that lamb would just go everywhere with you. More devoted than a dog. And now I'm going to take that lamb and I'm going to go offer it to the Father. And he, that my little lamb is going to take all my sins. I'm going to transfer all my sins into that little lamb. I'll transfer that, my sins into that little lamb by confessing my sins. Confessing them on a level that says, I am worthy to die and to be put to death because I know this is an offense of God to everything that you are. People don't realize what sin is. Sin is so terrible to a God who is nothing but love. Sin is so terrible that he will destroy it for eternity in hell. He said, don't offend it. Don't, don't allow yourself to bring offense. Don't, don't, don't transgress this life it would be better if you plucked out your eye than to transgress this life and enter into eternity and eternal death having two eyes it's better to go into life with just one the hand the foot that's how radical God is about it we need to be radical too and if we're really and if we've seen him and if we've fallen in love with him and we beheld his beauty we don't want nothing to do with the mess of the demonic realm anyway. What's there but death and decay? What's there but sin and its wages? The Lord Jesus beckons every one of us to come out from among them, have nothing to do with all that uncleanness and all that worldly stuff. And he said, I will receive you. No, we want to come with all the worldly stuff and all of our crazy notions of what God's going to accept now that our lamb was offered for us at Calvary and expect that Papa's going to accept us and receive us. He's not going to receive us. He says there's a sin offering that lies at the door. Offer it. Be cleansed from your sin. Then the, my very life, my heart, my nature, my, the same desires that I have will fill you. And you'll want to learn how to walk in this way everlasting. You'll want to live in this place oh, where there's pleasure forevermore. To flow out of you. And teach you how to speak different, think different, act different. And, and you'll then learn how to move in an unlimited way realm of heaven and divine glory.
I'll take this. I'll take this. The world does not have a light shining if you and I are not living the life of Jesus. He said, all, everyone who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have this light of life. That's what Jesus said. It's the, it's the very quality of Father's own way, of his own mercy, of his own grace, of his own forgiveness. Strife, bickering, fussing, all of those things are belong to another realm. I, we started the School of the Spirit on Friday night. If there's anything I want to teach people in the School of the Spirit is how to take heed unto the Word of God and understand that the Word of God describes to us what God is doing. Person I grew up calling Uncle Charles, a very close friend of our family, a great theologian in the, in the 20th century. He would always say this. He said, wisdom is knowing what God is doing and doing it with him. That's wisdom. If he wants an instantaneous wisdom because now I've got to make a decision. No, wisdom comes because you live by the word of God and you walk with God. You just do what it is he says for you to do. And here, wisdom gives to me an understanding of what Father is doing because the word of God, which is wisdom, that's what the word uh, describes his heart, his will, his purpose. And he said, this Holy Spirit says, this is what I'm doing. Here's what I'm doing. I'm loving. I'm forgiving. I'm showing mercy. I'm, making, I'm, I'm, I'm calling people to come into a fellowship of joy. Huh? Hallelujah. I'm laying down my life. For those who hate me the most. Huh? And, um, you know, and I, you'll find me constantly coming back to this. God's given us a love for every situation we find ourselves in. Did you know that? He's get, and and there's, there's nobody, he says, oh, you get to hate those folks. So anybody was looking for somebody to get to hate for a few moments? Doesn't, there's no opportunity. In fact, you shouldn't want that stuff because that belongs to a world called darkness. We love our enemies and bless them. Hallelujah. Whew. How do we love our enemies? Like Jesus loved his enemies. We were once his enemies. Christ committed his love for us. That while we were still alienated. Enemies by wicked works. Oh God, what a merciful God. How do, how do I love my neighbor? Those people that I, all I do is I see them passing by me in a car going down I-5. Or passing by me in a shopping center or on the sidewalk or wherever. In everyday life, that's my neighbor. That's myself. That's how I'm supposed to love him. How, do I, how am I supposed to love the church? Now it goes to the ultimate. It goes to the ultimate place of the expression of love for which you and I must be consecrated to, people. Because if we're not, we don't understand. There is no light here. It's been made darkness. If that light be darkness, if that light that is in you be darkness, oh, how great is that darkness? Because it's a, it's a stronghold of deception. Here in the church, this is supposed to be the manifestation of love, the same kind of love that Christ Jesus has loved us with. Uh, divine love. This is what God the Holy Ghost is teaching us. This is the light. This is light. This is light. This is the light. In him was a life. And that life is the light. Of men and men are in darkness and in darkness if they could just see a beacon of light they would start gravitating towards that light in Jesus name revival comes to the church of Jesus Christ in Jesus name there's going to be somebody who's going to be willing to stand up and say wait a minute I have some authority to say sin you don't belong out hallelujah first with my own life in my own house, secondly, in the house of God. Amen. And then we go out into a lost and dying world and we, and we just say hello and devils go out in mass. Thousands of people instantly delivered. Hallelujah. No, it's true. It's true. One of the great um, missionaries of, of Nepal, for example, he, wonderful man of God, great man of God, been first missionary to Nepal in 1952. His son was leading their church choir. They get the biggest church in the nation. And they sang for an hour, hour and a half. 
But we had received an anointing, a special anointing. After they, and everything was fine. As soon as my wife walked out there and smiled, devils went out of people in mass. In mass. Schizophrenia. People who were schizophrenic instantly delivered. People who were, who were what, the best way to describe it, describe it they were out of their mind mad men on the streets of Kathmandu. Instantly, totally set free. You name it. Why? Because we're saying, Satan, you have nothing to do with me. You have no place in my life. Hallelujah. You sit down in your living room and you turn on your television. And immediately, if, if the television goes anywhere, you, can, you feel the power of God speaking to you. You feel like if it's something that's wrong, you're immediately grieved. People quench that. They quench that. And they go ahead and do whatever it is they're doing. But for me, living in a, under the mantle of his presence, living in his life, I don't want anything messing with that life. Huh? I'm not, I'm not let... It is the most beautiful state of living. Because it's joy unspeakable. That's the most... That's better than drunk. Huh? You come on, now listen to me. It's peace that passes understanding. That's better than any high man can come up with, either no matter how he dis, no matter how he produces that. Vacation high, shopping high, eating high, drug high, whatever. You with me? High on self. Whatever. <laughs> Joy unspeakable. Love. Love where you look around and there's nobody you feel bad about. When you, when you don't, you listen, when there's nobody feel bad about, you feel bad about, it is such a wonderful state of being. No matter what they did to you, you don't feel bad about anybody. You feel, start feeling bad about people, you're feeling bad about yourself. Huh? And you really feel bad about them because they, they haven't given you the approval you need of yourself. And you're so insecure, you're, you're crushed. Huh? Now you're devastated. Now you're becoming that much more of an ornery person to have to be around. And that's terrible. See how it just keeps snowballing in its effect, in its impact? Oh, God, the Holy Ghost keeps us from all of that. It's a beautiful, wonderful life. It's beautiful, wonderful. It's a light. It's the light. In Him was the life. And the life is the light of men. Anyone who follows Him shall not walk in darkness, but shall have this life. They shall have this kind of life that is a light to the world. Would you like to have this life today? Would you like to understand how to walk in this life in yet a higher way? Will you come out and today draw a radical line and be those who stand on the other side, who stand over here on this other side with Father. The other side, Paul described it in Colossians 1.13, said he translated us over to the other side. He brought us out of the world and the kingdom of darkness and has brought us into, translated us into the kingdom of the dear son. Somebody said, can you take a hold of the power of God in such a way that you'd be translated? Absolutely. That's how you got started. Translation. I pray that from this day forward you understand how to come into his presence and remain there. And you understand that those things that you've allowed in your life pull you out, as it were, of his presence. Because reality of it is, though God has made a way for us to stand in the holies of holies by the blood of Jesus and live there, if you allow sin in your life, you're out. Not that the love of God's not pulling on you. It's not that you not that you need to get saved all over again. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you probably understand that by experience very, very well. Eh? Yeah. Because Papa's not agreeing with sin. Just not going to do it. Holy Spirit's come to convince us, to reprove us, to correct us, to show us how to walk in this way, to teach us the paths of life so that we might walk in righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Amen. Let me read this one verse of scripture to you, and then I'm going to close. I'm going to give everybody an opportunity in here to turn your life completely over to Jesus. 
Somebody said, well, I already did that. Well, you just do it again. <laughs> I command you, my dear friend, Brother Yun, he'll be here, he'll probably be here April. He's called, he's known as the heavenly man. He, and uh, the way he ministers, he just walks up to people and commands them to fall down and repent. repent. Fall down and repent right now in Jesus' name. That your sins may be blotted out. Huh? He's very different. He don't ask people if they want to accept. He commands all people to repent. It's very different. It's kind of like the Bible. You know what I'm saying? Now he's got an authority to do it in a different way. And when you live a life in the Holy Ghost, that works. When you live a compromised life, huh, you don't know where you're at. Somebody said, the other day said, oh, I don't want to go to church because of all the hypocrites. He said, well, that's like saying I don't want to go to the gym because there's people there that are out of shape. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot of folks that are out of shape in the, in the church. And we, by the help and the grace of God, they're going to get in shape in Jesus' name. <laughs> We're not going to let them be posers in Jesus' name. Everybody's going to get in shape. And that shape is to be conformed to the image of Christ. Hallelujah. In all things. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In the mighty name of the living God. Let me read this first scripture to you over here in, in Romans chapter 5. And I believe... I believe it's verse 21. Let me get over there. I keep, th I keep seeing 17. But it's pretty sure it's 20. No, it's 17. And I, somebody said, well, you, have, you, you see and you have photographic memory. No, I have word of knowledge. <laughs> Best way to practice word of knowledge is scripture. That's the way all the old guys that I was raised up around, that's the way they moved in the word of knowledge. God give them a verse of scripture for someone. You know what? Every time the Father's ever spoke to me, every time the Holy Ghost ever speaks to me, every time the Lord Jesus ever speak, speaks to me, he always quotes scripture to me. When I was in Tokyo not too long ago and I was concerned about the situation of Japan and how that a free society could be the most unreached people group that I've ever been in in any nation I've ever been in. And I'm saying, Lord, what's going on? The Lord spoke to me at 5 o'clock in the morning. And I just thought of, you know, praying John Hyde used to get up at 5 o'clock every morning and pray. There's a lot of people who got up at 5 o'clock in the morning and pray. All of China gets up at 5 o'clock in the morning and pray. The, the church of China, 170 million plus. 170 plus. Over a million coming into the kingdom every month. China is about to be used even in greater ways than people could have ever imagined in the kingdom of God. I pray that there'd be some praying John Hyde's in this place. He turned India towards the kingdom of God because of his prayer, his prayer and intercession. If you've never read about praying John Hyde, do so. It'll stir the coals from off the altar of God within your heart to follow people of such faith, such power and authority with God. The Spirit of the Lord spoke. Jesus spoke to me and said, I have. Somebody said, oh, you know what, in the Holy Ghost, it's Jesus. He said, I have. Holy Spirit would have said, Jesus has. You are you with me? Father would have said, my son has. Are you with me? Yeah. Jesus said, I have. All authority in heaven and earth. I'm just looking for someone to agree with me. Personalized it for me. He said, Mark, I'm looking for someone to agree with me. To come under his reign and live under his reign now voluntarily. One day he'll rule with a rod of iron. And not too, not too many years from now. Maybe not too many months from now. Maybe not too many weeks from now. Maybe not too many days from now. Maybe not too many hours from now. Maybe not too many minutes from now. He will come. He will come. And of course, understanding the Bible, we know that if we were caught away right now and changed and transformed in a moment and twinkling of an eye at the last trump when Christ Jesus comes with a shout and the voice of an archangel, amen, there'd be seven years before he comes, at least, right? Are, are you with me? We can count it from the very hour and the very day. Somebody said, do you believe in the rapture? 
the catching away. I absolutely believe in the catching away. And, the, and everybody believes in the catching away. They just wonder when the catching, catching away happens. And for me, I believe it happens before the day that marks the time scale of seven years. Otherwise, we'd know exactly the day and the hour in which the Lord comes because you can calculate it to that degree of accuracy. But that's just a side note. That was extra for you today. <laughs> And I, 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 personally, I just love to minister that way. I, I just want everybody to have the same hope that I see, that I have. I want anybody hoping they're going to go through some more torment, some more torture. I want everybody to be looking for that day. Well, let me get this first, and then we'll, I'll come back to what I was saying in a minute, because the Holy Ghost will remind me what I'm saying. Was saying. Verse 17. I'm going to agree with the Lord. I'm going to, I'm going to live voluntarily under his reign. Yes. Okay? Are you with me? Yes. yes. He's going to come back and he's going to rule with the rod of iron. And he's going to smash things. He's going to, what is he going to smash? Sin. Any kind of sin or rebellion. So he's going to smash. The Lord's going to smash rebellion? Yeah, he's going to smash rebellion. Well, I thought we were supposed to just kind of, you know, let rebellion go. No, you don't want to let rebellion go. He's going to smash rebellion. Come submit yourself voluntarily to the reign of Jesus today. It's a beautiful reign. Look at this. Romans chapter 5, verse 17. For if by one man's offense, who's that? Adam. Huh? My wife told me one day, she said, you know, if Adam would have just been the man of God he was, should have been, he'd have walked over and slapped that thing out of her hand. <laughs> Are you with me? I said, baby, you get, said, I'm glad you said that, not me. <laughs> That's powerful. It's true. It was, the woman's sin wasn't, the woman's sin isn't counted here. Huh? We blame Eve. Kava is her name as we read it in the Hebrew Bible. We blame Eve. We blame Eve. It's Adam's fault. He's responsible. Huh? He's responsible. God put him in the place of responsibility. And because of his sin, because of his transgression, because of his iniquity, because of his offense, isn't that a, isn't that a light way to talk about sin? Are you with me? What did he offend? The light of God. That's sin. An offense against the life of God is the transgression. Offense against the life of God, his love, his joy, his peace, his long-suffering, his gentleness, his goodness. Well, I, I pray in Jesus' name, you, you'll stop being hard to handle. I pray you'll stop being hard to handle and just go ahead and submit to the Holy Ghost to live in his goodness. To just be blessed all day long. Huh? Just quit being muley. Quit being hard to handle. Please, in Jesus' name, don't say that sin is greater than the, than, the, than the righteousness, that the disobedience is greater than the obedience, that the influence and the desires of Satan are greater than the influence and desires of God. Please don't do that anymore because it's a de propaganda, it's a lie from the realms of Satan to cause you to be defenseless against his power. Come, let there be a revival in the church that transgressors may be converted. Huh? As David said, restore unto me the joy of your salvation. Then shall transgressors be converted. Then shall I teach the offenders, sinners in your way. By Adam's offense, death reigned. That's sickness. That's sin. That's sickness, death, disease. Sickness and disease is just something that comes to eat away at the physical life. Jesus is the creator, the word. He's the creator. Sickness and disease comes to eat at the physical life. Death is a disease. It's the ultimate disease. Eats away at the, at the physical life, but also at the spiritual life. And that's what Adam died. He surely died that day. Jesus Christ, 
He is creator of the physical life. He is redeemer of the spiritual life. For Adam died that day. He is the Savior, thus giving us everlasting life. <laughs> because this one thing I am confident of, he who began a good work in you shall finish it. My goodness, what a great confidence. I'm laying hold, I'm laying hold on this eternal life, this unlimited life. I'm not going to compromise his word. Listen, listen to this. Now, look here. Much more, say much more. With a greater effect, saying with a greater effect, say with a greater effect. We understand the effect of Adam's offense and disobedience. We understand the effect of death reigning on all men. Now there is a, even a far greater effect upon our lives through Christ Jesus. Now much more they that have received abundance of grace. Have you received abundance of grace? What is an abundance of grace? It's the spirit of holiness coming and continuing to deal with you and me and saying, please don't do that, don't do that. If you do that, you shall die. Please, with long suffering, petitioning, petitioning us, begging us, beseeching us in his love and mercy, showing us his goodness, leading us to repentance. For it is the good, goodness of God that leads us to repentance. Much more, they that have received abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Christ Jesus. To where that we walk around now living under the authority of Christ Jesus so that we may have authority over all those things that would come to try to eat at, destroy, offend, affect in any way the life of God. And then I want you to look at the great, I want you to look at the reign of grace for just a minute, will you? Titus 2.12. I want you to look at that reign real quickly. And I'm closing. This is the third close, so you can count on it. fact of it is, I just like to stay here all day, tell you the truth. That's why I preach so well in China. That's why China and I fit in really well. So I went, the first time I went to China, they said, you know, we, we, we like to have meetings 10 to 12 hours. Is that okay? We're doing it. We had, we had such a wonderful time with all those preachers. I mean, they used, to see, they used to sit in prison and nothing to do. Now they're out of prison and they wanted time to spend with the Lord before they hit the, they hit the Evangel Trail again. And you guys are getting ready to go out there and hit the Evangel Trail too, right? Yeah. You're getting ready to go out there and confront Satan who goes about his roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, whom he's supposed to resist steadfast in the faith. You're about to go out there and refunt, confront all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. You're about to go out there and confront all the spiritual wickedness and all the craft of Satan. And you need to be built up in the faith. You need to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might. That's why we just spend a little extra time here with you. Men, Titus, 2.12. Look at the reign of grace. See that reign of grace? Verse 11, Titus 2.11. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. That's the reign of grace, the abundance of grace, teaching us. What is grace teaching us? Grace teaching us, you may continue in sin that grace may abound. Is grace teaching us? Don't worry about it. The Lord understands we're all sinners. We all live unrighteous. Huh? We all got... That's what... No, I didn't read that. I didn't read it. I mean, uh, my, my, your book is different. Can I see your book? What <laughs> translation is that? <laughs> Verse 12 says, Teaching us that denying ungodliness. I'm denying ungodliness. Hallelujah. Fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the life of God, the life that is the light, it's godliness. God, 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 God. Holiness. I count 26 fruits of the Spirit in the New Testament. 26. Not nine, 26. And there's more, really. You can it depends on how you pair it up. Because mercy and forgiveness, those two right there, for example, are not in the list of, of, of Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 through 23, are they? But there's a lot. Boldness, confidence, assurance. All manifestations of the, of the life of God. Here he is. Grace, the Holy Spirit, the workings of Christ Jesus in our life, teaching us to deny ungodliness. See it? 
Is everybody looking at that? Yeah. I want you to understand the reign of grace. What is grace going to teach you? To deny ungodliness and worldly lust. What's worldly lust? All that is in the world. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and pride of life. It's everything of doubt, unbelief. Those things that belong to porneo, which, which is translated whoremongers in Revelation, for example, 21. And also in Ephesians chapter 5. Teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust. Look at that. To live sober, righteous, godly. In this, in the future. When we all get to heaven. Now. Let me tell you how difficult the Lord made this. To have this life. Let me tell you how difficult he made it. He made it so simple. All you have to do is call on his name. All you have to do is say a one word prayer. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. He says it all. All power and authority is given in his name. There's no name given whereby men must be saved. Jesus. Says. He saves me from my sin. Jesus interpreted is he saves me from my sin. If you should call upon the name of the Lord, you should be saved. His Savior. I was out on one of those Michigan lakes one time and in a sailboat, my little sister, she's not here today, I don't know where she's at. We came, around, we came about too quick and it looked like the thing was going over. She cried out, Jesus! Just come right up. <laughs> Took care of my bad selling practices. <laughs> he'll save you. No matter what situation you find yourself in, he'll save you. He'll save you now. What problem do you have? You're probably, what problem do you have? Physical problem? Call on his name, he'll save you. What problem do you have? Spiritual problem? You have problems with addiction? He come and deliver you from that power of hell, the snare of death. Holy Ghost, come be your teacher if you'll make him your master and become his slave. I'm going to do one more verse of scripture. I got to. I'm sorry if I'm hurting anybody's time schedule today. But I just wanted to give this one verse of scripture. I'm feeling really strong right now, Romans 6.22. My, lo my wife loves to listen to me preach all day. It's amazing. I walk in the house. She's just got it constantly going. I'm like, baby, don't you ever get tired of hearing me preach? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was uh, doing college fellowship for Calvary Chapel North Park in 1981. That's where I met my wife. She came to the meetings. I watched this girl for three years. My goodness, what a woman. What a, I'm just so blessed, baby. I just love you so much. I got I to gotta quit preaching about my wife. And, I mean, I, you know what? I just, she's, the Lord's used her to teach me so much about love. Teach me so much about who he is. He took... He took towel and basin in hand, came washed the feet of those who are transgressors. He left all of his glory to take upon himself these earthly robes and garments to be made in the likeness of sinful flesh, to esteem our life better than his own, to love us more than he loved himself, as it were, to offer himself a ransom for our sins. Let us, let us come over into this realm of God's life and start living under the mastery of the Holy Spirit so that the men that sit in darkness might see that great light has sprung up among us. They see this love, this manifest glory of His presence. A love that you can't know outside 
of redemption, a love that you cannot even begin to comprehend or participate with in any degree without the power and presence of the Holy Ghost. Verse 22 of Romans chapter 6. But now being made free from sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But now being made free from sin, I have become a slave to God. Paul said a slave to righteousness earlier. A slave of righteousness. My, my very being, my very life. It's like weapons of righteousness. I know you used the word instrument, but it's the same Greek word is translated in 2 Corinthians 10 for the weapons of our warfare. It's weapons. But now, servants of God, my fruit that you see is the fruit of holiness. What is that? The life of God. Holiness is the life of God. It only exists in His presence. No presence, no holiness. Says, he defines holiness. There's no definition of holiness outside the life of God. It can only be defined and understood and described by who He is. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord God Almighty. Holy. Fruits. My life, the testimony of that which I do. How does that fruit come? Holiness is only comes by the spirit of holiness. Or the Holy Spirit. Translate that, translate that description of who he is. It's not his name. It's a description of who he is. Either way, in both Hebrew and in Greek, spirit of holiness or Holy Spirit, equivalent. Thank you, spirit of holiness. Thank you, Master, that you've come to lead me, guide me in all truth. Thank you that you've come to fill me up so much with heaven's glory that out of my life, out of my passions, out of my emotions, now this is, some of you watching right now by the web may say, well, you've just gone off the deep end. No. <laughs> passions and emotions. Jesus didn't say heart. He didn't say soul. He didn't say spirit. He, said, he used a very unique Greek word that in Attic Greek refers to passions and emotions. The word is kolia. Out of my belly, out of my passions and emotions flow these inexpressible, inex unexhaustible realms of the life of God. Rivers. This spake of what? The spirit of holiness. Holiness. The Holy Spirit. Pura sekina presence of the living God. I want everybody who's saved stand up with me right now. Everybody who's been redeemed, saved by Christ Jesus, you've been set free. Now I want everybody who's sitting down, you stand up too right now, I set you free in Jesus' name. Live the life of God. Live! All you have to do is turn your back on sin. I break off every stronghold from off of you. Every mind-blinding spirit, I demand it go. Satan, I destroy your work now in Jesus' name. You must obey me. You take your hands, your filthy hands, of those who were created by Christ Jesus. Those for which his blood was shed to redeem. Those who, sees, who he has been made the Savior and Prince of life. Hallelujah. Amen. It's all about your heart. It's all about the condition of your heart. What will you believe? Will you believe upon his name? Will you call upon his name? If you will. Everything that I just declared will be yours. Satan can't hinder you. Blindness of heart can't stop you. Just lift your hands towards heaven and surrender to him now. Just lift both hands towards heaven and surrender to him now. Oh, how he loves you. Satan's got to quit abusing you and lying against the truth in your life. God loves you. 
Father loves you and never stopped loving you. He loves you and never stopped loving you. I don't care how many times you failed. He loves you and never stopped loving you. It doesn't matter how many times you failed. He loves you. What will you believe? Believe it now. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take Him at His word. Just to rest upon His promise. Just to say, thus saith. Oh, I'm so glad that I've learned to trust in Jesus. Jesus, save your friend. And we'll be. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I prove you are and are. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust you. If there's anybody you want me to pray with you and for you, for anything spiritual, physical, financial, doesn't matter what it is. You want to turn your life completely over to Jesus and somehow you've been hindered and you can't seem to find your way to doing that. You've got a disease or a torment in your body or a disaster or a terrible event that's taking place in your life. Is gripping your heart and you're just not free to be able to sing that and say that and believe it. I want you to come right now and I'll pray for you and I'll break off that stronghold so you can go free. Live this day forward in the presence of the living God and find your whole life there now and throughout all eternity, all time to come. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust you, how I prove you all and all. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for I want you to turn to a bunch of people and tell them that you love them, bless them in Jesus' name. Tonight we'll be back here. We're going to have a miracle service tonight. Come back for the miracle service. Healing of the body. Healing of the mind. Healing of the heart. Husbands, love your wives. Christ loved the church. Wives, love your husbands. Everybody, we want to encourage you to bring an offering to the Lord. Everyone, we want to encourage you to bring an offering to the Lord. The Lord gives it all free. It's all free. But worship Him with your tithes and with your offerings. Because that's a means by which He's going to multiply unto you even more grace. That's what He said. That's what He said.